Oregon squad to the tackling curry, specifically spicy, delicious Jamaican style curry chicken. But I will be talking about Jamaican curry powder, what it is, and a couple of the ingredients that go into them. You might pick up a few ideas on how to make your own curry powder blend. But yeah, we are here to cook some damn good curry chicken today. And as usual, I will be showing you a few techniques to get a flavor pop curry dish. Curry goes really well with toasted coconut, so I'm going to have to make some of that as well. Hey, a big thanks for 14k subs. I never expected such rapid growth, and I'm happy to have all the squaddies tuning in. I don't upload frequently, so turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. First things first, let's make some green season for the chicken. Meat is really ever cooked without it, so let's make some. I need a medium onion, just going to dice it big. Celery, I'm just chopping these so my blender doesn't choke. Not so fresh thyme. Fresh thyme is much better though. Too scotchy. These are not as hot so I'm using two. About an inch of ginger. It's a bit fibrous so I'm chopping it smaller. Green bell pepper. I don't usually use bell pepper in my green season. It's optional but a lot of people swear by it so I'm giving it a go. I made green season in other videos that use a few different ingredients but they are still good. Time plant needs a little TLC, probably need to change the pot, so no fresh time for now, but I do have fresh basil. It's not traditional in Jamaican green season, but it does add a very nice fragrant background flavor. I'm not sure what type of basil this is, but it has some really nice purple blossoms. These smell good. They are usually filled with ants and other insects that are hard to wash out. I just want the leaves, the blender won't like the woody bits. I also need a stalk of skeleton. The purple one has a deeper, more distinct flavor than the green one. Of course, pimento or allspice. A head of garlic. Oil, about half cup. This is coconut, but you can use your favorite oil. Olive oil is always great. Vinegar, this is cane vinegar, but again, whichever one works for you. Don't be afraid of coloring outside the lines. And that's it. The only thing left is to get all this in a blender and blend it. This will help to really flavor the chicken before we even start cooking. Add a generous pinch of salt. Yup, green seasoning done. Alright, time for the chicken. I have four pieces here, but this could easily be six or eight and still work. Whenever I'm making stews, I usually go for darker meat. 
leg and thigh and wing gets a pass but I'm just using legs and thigh this time. These have a deeper flavor and can manage a longer stew versus a breast which has to be cooked more precisely so it doesn't end up dry, tough and trashy. Extra bones also equal extra flavor. I'm going to clean this up and chop into roughly bite sized pieces. That's done. I'm just going to rinse these in a little vinegar and water. Season with salt, black pepper. Most people at this point would add some powdered seasons, but this really doesn't need it. The marinade already packs a ton of flavor and we will be building up flavors when we get to cooking. I just need enough to coat the meat. Massage that in nicely so everything is coated. I'm going to let this marinade for about an hour. Alright, let's talk about Jamaican curry powders real quick. So if you go to a local Jamaican supermarket, you might find two types of curry powder, Indian and Jamaican. Both are technically Jamaican, but there are some key differences. Jamaican curry powder always has a shorter ingredients list, has allspice and ginger as key ingredients, but it's usually mostly ground turmeric, so finished dishes are typically a vibrant yellow. Spices like cumin and coriander are also added, but not in really significant quantities. Jamaican curry is a lot less complex as opposed to Indian curry. Still Jamaican but in the Jamaican. This has a way longer ingredients list. It still has a high turmeric ratio but the laundry list of other spices makes the flavors more complex and the color less vibrant. Sometimes turmeric is used in combination with Indian curry to get the best of both worlds vibrant yellow colors and the complexities of Indian curry. This is some fresh turmeric, not used too much nowadays, the color is impressive. By the way, turmeric is a laxative and might cause stuff to flow too freely sometimes. Yeah, they run belly someday. So that's why Jamaicans like to burn curry. More about that later. Let's talk about Jamaican's number one favorite curry brand, Better Pop Curry. This isn't as loved outside of Jamaica because it's primarily turmeric but Jamaicans love it for just that reason. Also has a distinct taste as far as local curry powders go and that's because the use of a relatively small amount of star anise in their curry blend. Star anise is a spice with a strong fragrant flavor so a little goes a far away. You can probably tell why it's called star anise. As far as I know, it's not popular in local curry blends except for better pack. Then find the formula. Oh, and you could easily make your own curry blend if you have spices like me laying around. Allspice, cumin, chili. Turn some cloves, you'll see that in a few blends as well. Also some powdered turmeric and you're good to go. Ginger as well but we want ground ginger. Ginger also has laxative properties so know what you're signing up for if you're combining it with turmeric. You don't want a bad day after eating curry. Funigreek and coriander powder are two ingredients commonly used as well. I don't have those here now. You can also add nutmeg to your curry powder blend. I did know it was so popular in Jamaican curry until recently. I 
another quick hack for Indian Jamaican curry powder or Indian curry powder is to use garam masala and turmeric powder. This is a local garam masala blend that has pimenta or allspice, so it, it's even closer to home. It has most of the spices typically found in Indian curry except turmeric powder. We could just throw these two together and have Indian curry powder. Alright, let's get back to the curry chicken. I'm going to need some vegetables. Let's start with some chopped garlic. This I will saute for extra flavor. And onion I will saute half with the garlic and the other half will go in a bit later. Set that aside separately. Skellion also splitting this in half. Some diced potatoes. This is going to go in a bit later. Potatoes add a really nice texture and body to the sauce. I want some diced carrots with that potato as well. Okra. No, this is totally optional but I've seen colleagues put okra in curry and it's the best thing. I almost forgot the scotchy. I want some sweet pepper on that okra pile. This is going in last for varied color and texture. So I want red, yellow, and purple. So the carrot, potato, and onions will go in after the chicken has been cooking for a while. This pile with the garlic and onions will be sauteed and this colorful bunch will go in last. Okay, let's go. Frying pan on. Hit that with any neutral oil with a high smoke pan. About a teaspoon of dried pimento. And add the pile of vegetables with the garlic, onion and scallion. Saute until it just starts to brown. Then reduce the heat so nothing burns. Then add 2 tablespoons of curry powder. This is better pack by the way. Burning the curry, as Jamaicans call it, is simply cooking off the curry powder in the oil. It improves flavor and reduces the laxative effects. You want to burn the curry for about a minute, then you can go ahead and add the marinated chicken. That's a vibrant yellow color Jamaicans like to see in their curry. I'm gonna cover this and let it cook for about 10 minutes. Ten minutes later, I can go ahead and add the potato and carrot to the pot. I'm adding them now so these are cooked nice and tender by the time the chicken is ready. I want them soft but not mushy. I'm also going to reduce the heat to low.
This is great and it complements curry perfectly. I'm going to show you how to get perfect toasted coconut. So here I have a few pieces of dried coconut. This isn't bone dry, but whichever you have is fine. I'm going to use a vegetable peeler to get some nice thin shavings. A mandolin or grater works really well too. This is hella sharp. Nice. I need a little sprinkle of G sugar, salt, and a splash of coconut oil to help with even browning. Looks like rain never going to start, so I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Frying pan. A baking tray is good too. A bit of grease paper. Alright, that's it. The sugar and the salt is starting to draw the water out of the coconut. This is going into the oven at 300 degrees and I will toss them every 5 or so minutes until they brown evenly. Alright, these are good smell is amazing this isn't just good with curry but you can place them in your cereal you know your granola or on top of ice cream these are still hot so they will still be a little limp this is my test batch from yesterday when they cool down they get super crispy and they almost melt in your mouth when you eat them Alright, it's been about half hour and our curry is almost ready. I want the chicken to be almost falling off the bones. I'm going to give this another 5 minutes. Nice, I'm adding about half cup coconut milk. This is going to give it a nice flavorful creamy finish. Just let that simmer for a bit. Next, I'm going to add okra and bell peppers. These will cook with only the residual heat, so as soon as I stir these in, I'm going to turn off the stove. That's beautiful. Notice I didn't add any liquid, so this is super flavorful. The squad overwhelmingly prefers white rice with curry, so I'm going to cook some.
This is basmati rice. It's a really nice long grain rice that cooks up extremely fluffy and it's a great side for the rich curry chicken. This is about two cups of rice. I'm just going to give this a proper rinse. I'm going to submerge this in about two and a half cups of water and I'm not adding salt. I like to skip salt whenever I'm having this with curry. The one inch water level can sometimes be unreliable. Luckily, basmati rice is very forgiving as far as rice goes, so it's kind of hard to mess up. I'm placing this on high heat and when it starts to boil, I reduce it and let it steam. Plain, even bland starchy sides goes really well with spicy flavorful curry. that's cooked. There's a bit too much water so I'm giving it a few more minutes. So in typical feed and teach fashion we have to plate this up. Rice is fluffy and fragrant. Place that beautiful curry on top of the rice. Next, add the toasted coconut we made earlier. This is great, so make sure you give this one a try. Oh, and add a piece of basil for garnish, and that's done. A delicious flavor packed plate of curry chicken and white rice. I got really sick before I could film the taste test, but you have been watching me make this, so you definitely know this was bomb. Anyways, thanks for tuning in squad and I will see you in the next one.